Hey there, fellow tech enthusiasts. Today, I want to take virtual machines to a whole new level. We've already seen how awesome they are, but now it's time to get a little crazier. Buckle up, because we're going from installing virtual machines on a type 2 hypervisor, like VirtualBox, to a type 1 hypervisor. But you have not tried VirtualBox yet. Watch this video first. Here, trust me. It's going to be mind-blowing. Hello, oh, what exactly does it mean to use a Type 1 hypervisor? Well, it means more virtual machines, larger virtual machines, and a whole lot more power. Imagine having the ability to create massive labs, experiment with cutting-edge technology, and dive into more geeky stuff out there. And guess what? You don't need fancy equipment for this. All you need is an old laptop or a dusty PC lying around. That's right. We're going to turn that forgotten machine into a powerhouse. Let's start this process right now. Okay. Here we go. Let's get started. Let's install Proxmox. But first, what do you need? The first thing you need is a computer. Right. Now what type of computer? Well, it can be anything from an old laptop or old PC you have lying around. Like the one I have right here. Or a super server that is decked out like crazy. That'd be cool. Go for that. But seriously, it can be anything. I have this 10 year old PC gathering dust in my closet and I thought, you know what? Let's do some cool stuff on it. Virtual machines. Yeah, as far as the minimum hardware you might need. Because you might be rocking something super old. Right, like a Pentium or something. Anyways, here on Proxmox. It actually doesn't need a lot to do stuff, but I've got a link below to the requirements. Check that out. See if you're good. Number 2. You'll need a USB flash drive. We need this to install Proxmox. Just a little guy like this. Nothing too crazy. A few a gigs minimum. And you're solid. Number 3. And this is pretty important. You need an Ethernet cable and a switch. Yeah, you probably already have a switch in your house. It's probably a router modem combo. Right. That's fine. But you will need this Ethernet cable because Proxmox will not use Wi-Fi. I know your laptop probably has Wi-Fi. But you can't use it. Only Ethernet cable. Yeah. Let's prepare the flash drive. Step 1 is super easy. We're going to prep our flash drive. Download Proxmox. So we can install Proxmox on our laptop or desktop or super server. Whatever you got, let me know what you have below. So grab your flash drive, and plug it into your computer. Plugged in, yeah. To download Proxmox, just go to proxmox.com, or click the link in the description and go to downloads. This is super quick and easy. No signups or anything. I love this. Let's download Proxmox virtual environment. Click on Download and then select Proxmox Virtual Environment. After that click on ISO Images. The version we're using here is 7.4, but the current version is 8.1, which is having some issues with graphic card for me. So I am going to install 7.4. You can give 8.1 version a try if it works for you, but it might be different when you're watching this. Comment below and let me know what version you see. Alright. Let's download the latest version now. It should only take a few seconds if you have fast internet. How fast is your internet? Let me know in the comments. While that's downloading, we need a tool to write the ISO to our flash drive. I'm on Windows, so I'll show you how to do it using Rufus. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can use just like Etcher. I'll leave a link to Rufus and Etcher in the description. Just Google Rufus and click on the download link. Once you have Rufus open, select your flash drive from the list of devices. Make sure you choose the right one. I only have one flash drive, so it's easy for me. Make sure your flash drive has at least 8 gigs of space. Yeah, select the ISO file you just downloaded. When it's done, click start. Here's the important part, choose DD mode. But Rufus will do it automatically and prompt this message. Just click OK. This is specific to Rufus on Windows. Click OK and it will warn you that it will overwrite everything on the flash drive. That's what we want. So click OK again. Yeah. 
Just wait for Rufus to finish writing the ISO to the flash drive. It might take a while. So till then, make sure to subscribe the Hack Guy channel and hit that like button. Once it's done, grab your flash drive and let's move on to the next step. Plug the flash drive into your computer and let's continue the installation process. Make sure you have your LAN cable connected before proceeding. Now that we have the ISO written to the flash drive, we're ready to install Proxmox Virtual Environment. Restart your computer and boot from the flash drive. This might require changing the boot order in your BIO settings. To do so, for me it's pressing Dell or F to key. Once you're in BIO select your USB as main boot sequence and press F10 key to save and exit. For more info check this video here. Once you're booted into the Proxmox installer, follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. It's a pretty straightforward process, so I won't go into too much detail here. Just make sure you select the right options for your setup. Click on Install Proxmox CE. Then if you see this message, then you did not see my previous video of VirtualBox. Watch the video now. Next click on I agree. Now next select your hard disk. Where you want to install Proxmox then click next. Enter your details. And click next. Now enter password and email. Also don't forget this password. Click next. Now you can keep hostname as it is. Or change it. If you hate connected LAN, this information will be autofill as you can see. Check if the info is right and click next. Now check overall info you entered and click install. Once the installation is complete, remove the flash drive and restart your computer. Congratulations! You now have Proxmox Virtual Environment installed and ready to use. Make sure you are on same network. We can now access our virtual machine through the web UI, which means we can say goodbye to our laptop or desktop. But make sure you have good ventilation to keep hardware safe as it is a server it will be running 24 7. It's time to embrace the convenience of the web. Are you ready? Let's do this. To log in, open up your web browser and enter the following https colon slash slash 192.168.0.7 colon 8006. This address to access Proxmox UI. You will see this address when you have completed the installing of Proxmox. Don't worry if you see a warning about the SSL certificate. It's just because we're using our own server. Trust me, it's safe. Click continue or proceed and voila. We're in. Yeah, for the first login. Use the default username root and the password you set during installation. And just a heads up, you might see a message about no subscription. But don't panic. Proxmox is free to use. However, they do offer paid support if you need it. But hey, we're Linux enthusiasts. Right, we've got this covered. Okay, now that we're logged in, let's address a few things before we jump into creating our first virtual machine. This step is all about increasing our storage. By default, we're not utilizing the full potential of our hard drive. But fear not. We can fix that. Before we proceed, let me clarify that this step is only necessary if you installed Proxmox on an old PC or laptop with a single hard drive. If you're rocking a super server with multiple hard drives, you can skip this part. Look you. Alright. Let's move on. Yeah. What we're about to do might seem a little intimidating. But trust me. We'll be just fine. I've already tested it out myself. Click on little error here to expand the menu. You can see local LVM is taking up half the space of our hard disk. So let's delete it. To do so head over to data center here. Now head over to the storage section on the side panel. Don't worry. I'll be right here with you. Now click on local LVM and then click on remove here. Click yes to remove. While you are in data center. Storage. Double click on local here and select all the content as shown which we need. That's all.
Now head back to main node and select shell from side panel. Here we have to type few commands it's pretty easy, just follow along and all commands are in description. First command is LV remove slash dev slash PVE slash data and press enter. Press Y and enter again. Next command is LV resize dash L plus 100 free slash dev slash PVE slash root and press enter. Next command is resize ew fs slash dev slash mapper slash pve dash root and press enter. This will resize and allocate all size to local, which we can use to create more viral machines. Now let's check our local here. Yep, we have all the space allocated to local. Finally, the moment you've been eagerly waiting for has arrived. It's time to create some virtual machines. But before we dive into that, we need to upload the necessary ISO files. The disk images required to install these virtual machines. Yeah, which ISO should we upload? Well, that's entirely up to you my friend. You can choose whichever ISOs you want to play around with right now. Whether it's Kali, Carrot OS, Ubuntu. CentOS, or even Windows Server and Windows 10 the choice is yours. And the best part, it's all free. Well, most of the Linux stuff, at least, if you want to explore all the options, I've included some links below for your convenience. I highly recommend starting the download process right away, as it might take some time depending on your internet speed. But hey, no worries for me I'm already good to go. In fact, I've already finished downloading them. So, let's get straight to uploading them. Click on local, then select ISO images from side panel. Now click on upload, then select the ISO files, which you have downloaded. For me I will select Kali Linux, Windows 10 Tiny OS. Okay it's all uploaded now. Click on the hack guy note here. And then click on create virtual machine. I only have one node. So I will select that. Then V. M I D. You can assign it any value or keep it as it is. And I like to name it Rem. Do you know from which anime it's from? Comment below. Then hit next. Then select the ISO files. Which we want to install. It will show the ISO file. Which we uploaded earlier. Then hit next. Here you can assign graphics and machine. But I am going with the default for now. Then hit next. Then select storage. If you have multiple storage like me, you can select where you want to install and assign disk size. I will give it 50 gigs. And hit next. Now assign some cores. I will give it to cores. Hit next. Now assign RAM for virtual machine. I have around 16 gigs RAM. So I can give it 4 gigs. Give the cores and RAM base on your system specs. Hit next. In network section, you can change the network settings if you keep it defaulted will assign I. T address from your router it's fine for now. Hit next. Select now check overall information of the machine select start after created it will take few seconds to create. You will see RAM virtual machine under main node. Click on it. In summary you can see all the information of the machine how much memory. RAM. CPU usage. Networks and more. Click on console and complete the installation process. You can follow same process and install as many virtual machines you want. Based on your system of course. Also once you are bored or if you mess up something, you can just delete and recreate virtual machines again and again. So that's all for this video. In next videos, we will see how to create our own Google Drive or OneCloud with NextCloud and how to stream 24 7 on YouTube for free using end media server all using this proxmox server which we have created so don't forget to subscribe the hack guy channel and join our discord server if you have any issues comment below I hope you like today's video 
Well, see you guys in the next video. Bye.